Just before the break, do you remember I asked which of these images were fakes created by artificial intelligence? Well, the answer is, ta da 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 they all are. Every one of them, all three. And that's just one small example of the power and potential impact for good and bad that artificial intelligence is having on our lives. Well, tech journalist Lara L Lewington joins me now. Um, you know, we talk a lot about AI. What, what does it actually mean, though? OK, well, artificial intelligence is where a computer is doing the thinking and creating like a human. You know, right. that's the basic description of what it is. But recently, there's been a lot of coverage of ChatGPT. Yes. There's also Google's Bard, which is becoming available soon. I've had early access to it, where you can search on Google with generative AI built in. And this generative AI is the AI which is writing stuff for us, creating images. Right. So there's AI all around us already, from mm. the moment that you look at your phone in the morning and it recognises your face to be able to open, to when you're posting on social media, all around us, there's AI right now, mm. but what has really caught people's imagination and I think has become a really emotive issue is the fact that it can write like a human. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? Could you give us an example of that? Because that, to me, seems like it's actually starting to think. Yeah. You know, if it's writing, just from nothing. Right? Well, so, OK, yeah. so... Just before I do this, because I'm going to get ChatGPT to write a 30-second poem about you. Oh. But just to explain how this works, it doesn't know anything. It doesn't have any knowledge. Okay. It works on the statistical probability of what word will follow another. Oh. So when you ask it to do something, that's how it generates its response. Okay. So I'm just going to click on this, and I'm going to hope we can get onto the platform, because sometimes it's busy. <laughs> Luckily... It is working. Is, it, is that writing a poem about me right now? It is already writing the poem. Let me read it to you. Worry. <laughs> Lorraine Kelly, a face we know well, a smile so warm, a heart to tell. Her voice a comfort to all. Oh, oh, sorry, her voice a comfort, a friend to all. Her charm a gift that never falls. With grace and wit, she lights up our day. Lorraine Kelly, a sunshine ray. Oh. Seriously? Isn't that nice? That, I like that robot. That's a nice robot. It's a nice robot. Now, is there anything you'd like to tweak about the poem? Because follow-up questions are quite a fun thing on here. If you'd like it to do it in the style of something specific or you want it to sound more formal, less formal, really? any other guidance? you'd like me to give it no, it can I'm, rewrite it. No, I'm too frightened of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Don't need to be frightened no, of it. No, no, I guess it, it, well, it although, about you. Although there is a fear, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, of course Especially there is. about jobs. You know, there's that thing about, oh, well, robots will do our jobs and we'll all be out for a job and we'll all have to just sit and how's that going to work? Is that a valid worry about jobs? Look, there's a lot of fear and I do respect that fear, but there is also a lot of possibility yeah. here. Some jobs will disappear. As the result of AI, as the result of robotics, some jobs will go. Right. But a lot of other jobs will be created. And obviously, this is a huge societal change. And I think we are at a really big, important turning point for AI. For years, I've been talking about this stuff, but I feel like it's gone really mainstream recently. Mm -hmm. And what we want AI to do for us, what we think it's right for it to do, and the decisions that we want it to make, we really need to talk about, because this is a whole new age, and we don't want to just move forward into it without knowing That's what's happening. That's true, because the thing was, I think the internet took us all by surprise. Um, and, you know, the genie was out the bottle, you couldn't actually regulate all these social media platforms. Now we really have to do that, because the thing about it is, the worry is, who's programming this? Who's putting the information in? And if the information is wrong or skewed, we're in trouble. And it will replicate the bias that exists in the real world yes. because this all starts with a lot of human data and you mentioned social media there. Now, I hope that something like this kind of generative AI could actually play a part in solving some of the problems that social media have with policing right. it because it can read as well as write. So there's a lot of possibility out there. Right. It's just naturally the emotive response mm. is to the issues that can come out of it. No, exactly. And you think about things like medicine, for example. The field of medicine, I mean, this could be extraordinary. You know, it could cure, it could help us cure if it can, let's say think, but you know what I mean? If it can take all the information in the world that's going on, yeah, and then come it. up with cures. I mean, that's astonishing. Well, there's a lot that AI can do that is very positive within healthcare. Right. We're not going to be losing doctors. We need doctors. We need human thought. We need human emotion. We need human reaction. But there is a lot that AI can do that a human can't. It can look at enormous amounts of data that no person could analyse and also do things at speed. If you look into healthcare where things need to be done fast, looking at scans, for example, right. there's a lot that it can do that 
is very specific. Like you could train an AI to look for, for example, a tumour in someone's lungs. Right. And so an AI could very specifically identify what looks like a tumour. But at the same time, the system may not be trained to identify emphysema, whereas a doctor would immediately see that. Any specialist would know that straight away. Sure. So as time goes on, AI will be able to do a lot more. It also needs a lot of approvals in healthcare to do the mm. things that it's doing. So we will see this evolve. This is just the beginning, but there's a lot of benefit out there as well as an understandable risk. I, I see why yeah. people are nervous as well. No, exactly, because when they become sentient, they're going to look around when they can think and look at us and say, they're dumb. They're a lot dumber than we are. We don't need them. Goodbye. Well, and then well, it's Terminator. And, and oh no. Well, what point they ever reach, I don't know. I, I hopefully we'll maintain some control over them and an off switch that we can press. But it's as they start to, to learn more and more for themselves and we see that continue that I think people may start to get a bit more nervous. It's, right. it's still early days for this. It is. And, and you're absolutely right. It's early days, so we have to police it and yep. make sure that we remain in control. <laughs> or it's, it's Terminator, isn't it? Thank you so much. That was absolutely fascinating, Lara. Thank Pleasure. you very much indeed.